Now here's a video about prostate massage from the point of view of the sexologist. You might have seen my video on prostate massage for benign prostatic enlargement. If not, check it out. Well, in this video I will be focusing on prostate massage for orgasms. In short, if you stimulate your prostate, you may experience a particular kind of orgasm which is somewhat different from the ones you get by penile stimulation. Now you know it and if that's all you wanted to know, you may as well switch to another video. For the ones who have followed my channel for a while, I think you know that I try to give my videos that little twist because I like to get creative with all the bits and pieces of information. In this case, we definitely have to look at female orgasm. I am sure you have heard about clitoral orgasms and vaginal orgasms and probably all of you have heard about the G-spot. If you are not familiar with the concept of the G-spot, I absolutely recommend that you watch this video afterwards. In this video I visit the village where it all began and follow Ernst Grafenberg's tracks. There are some striking similarities when looking at male and female orgasms and when I searched the literature on both topics the expression male g-spot appeared a couple of times. So is the prostate the male g-spot? The interesting thing about prosthetic orgasms is this. They are completely ignored by the medical community. I mean, we scan people's brains with MRI while they are having sex and while they are masturbating to find out which centers of the brain are activated. But when it comes to prosthetic orgasms, nobody from my profession seems to care. However, when I search the internet and just put the terms prostate and orgasm into Google, it produced nearly 55 million results. There are all kinds of vibrators and gadgets which you can buy for that purpose. So despite of lacking scientific proof, the sheer number of information and products strongly suggest that prosthetic orgasms are real. I am saying this because the female G-spot still is a matter of debate with the experts fighting over the question whether it exists or not. But if you look at it combined, the G-spot and the, well, P-spot, it kind of makes sense that there is a spot in neighboring anatomical areas in men and women which is able to produce orgasms. When we look at this area from a developmental perspective, the prostate develops in the fetus from the so-called urogenital sinus. You know, in the beginning, we all are nothing more but a bunch of cells. When these cells start to multiply and the embryo becomes a fetus, organs, bone or sex develop out of very few basic tissues. In men, the prostate is built out of the urogenital sinus. Women don't have a prostate, but they have a urogenital sinus too. In women, it doesn't develop into a prostate, but some women display glandular structures in the very same area these glands contain PSA, which is the prostate-specific antigen, which is a typical enzyme of the prostate. These glands are named after Alexander Skene, who described them in the year 1880 and named them Skene's glands. In anatomical studies, Skene's glands were found in about two-thirds of the women examined. Now, guess where these glands are located? at the same location where Ernst Grafenberg once described a very sensitive area which later on became known as the G-spot. So when we talk about prosthetic orgasms, it is kind of tempting to assume that we are talking about a similar phenomenon in men. But how is the prostate wired to produce orgasms? This question has not been answered because as I said in the beginning, nobody has really studied it. Fact is, prosthetic innervation plays an important role for penile orgasms and ejaculation. So it is not unthinkable that the penis might be bypassed by prosthetic stimulation. But this is pure speculation. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.